Hey guys, the Eccentric Owl here, and tonight we are reviewing a very interesting film, The Land That Time Forgot. Now, this is a, a beautiful reversible artwork from the Kino Blu-ray, which is to date the best version, but I'm going to show the original artwork as well because I struggled to choose between the two. As you can see, that's pretty good, but the one I settled on is this. Both beautiful artwork, by the way. So, let's talk about the film itself. The, the film was written, written by Edgar Rice Burroughs. And it, it has a lot of interesting names attached to it. And even more so, if you look at this Blu-ray, there's telltale signs that this film has changed hands a number of times throughout history. So we're not just talking about dinosaurs and World War II and all sorts of history. There's actually history layered uh, to the film as well. We, we have Samuel Arkoff Presents. A Max J. Rosenberg and Milton Sabotsky production. Now, now bef before you say anything, well, you, you can't, it's a video. It's, I'm going to tell you, uh, Arkoff, for those of you who don't know, he ran American International Pictures. And... Basically, these guys, they gave Roger Corman his, uh, a lot of his best big breaks. They have produced many films th throughout the 60s and 70s. They were a, a great company. And Rosenberg and Sabotsky. If anyone doesn't already know, those guys are the names behind Amicus Films. And Amicus films are what was harshly called uh, a poor man's hammer in Britain. They're a British company and they made horror films. A lot of them were anthologies. A lot of them involved Peter Cushing. And there may have been... A slight snobbishness of them not being as good as Hammer. I disagree. I think Hammer did have more films behind them. They had a bigger back catalogue, but I think Amicus, their best films, they hold their own against pretty much any Hammer. And this is one of their better films in my opinion. This is definitely one of their better ones. Doug McClure's in it, and th this is actually the first uh, well, not the first, but it's one of the the several films that are all uh, connected together as this Doug McClure uh, adventure uh, monster sort of things. And this film was actually sequeled. Well, let me see if I have the Blu-ray. It would have helped if I'd... The people that time forgot and... This will take a second. I should have actually looked this out before making the video. I didn't think. And... Yeah, this this is also from Kino, so you might want to get this if you like the original, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. I may do a separate video for it. So I'm going to start talking about the film. And the film, as I said, Weird Connections. Uh, n copyright, 1974 Orion Pictures. And then, if you look, 20th Century Fox, all rights reserved, distributed by Kino Lorber, Co copyrights, blah, blah, blah. Licensed from 20th Century Fox and Metro Golden Mayor. So... Obviously, this is, has been a hot product at some point for two of the major studios to have their name attached to it, in addition to uh, two of the 
the smaller independent studios originally producing it. So the question is, what's the fascination here? Well, in one word, dinosaurs. But there's so much more to it than that. The film starts out in World War II. And a, it's a sort of a hostage situation when a, a group of British troops end up stuck captive in a German submarine and through British attempts to sabotage, German attempts to counter-sabotage, they end up completely lost. Uh, typical human stupidity, they can't put aside their differences and just, uh, like, whoever's got the gun just say, look, we're in control, you're a prisoner of war, you'll go into... Uh, no, it doesn't work like that. And I understand it is war. These people might kill you, but... Uh, they they completely sabotaged each other back and forth. And they ended up somewhere in the, I believe, North Pole. Which is just a guess from all the ice caps, but... We don't know exactly where they are. We just know that in the process they end up diving under an ice cap, getting through it and finding this sort of confined, sheltered, tropical paradise that's surrounded by walls of mountains of ice cap and volcano. And it's a, it's a strange, surreal film. So, we, we've got the German officers, we've got the British officers, and they are now in a place where dinosaurs exist. There are triceratops, there are pterodactyls, there are cavemen, and this is just a bizarre situation. I mean, you take a hundred writers, you take a hundred and tell them all to write you an interesting action-adventure type story about World War II. You can bet 99 of them, at least, are going to come back with stories about toughing it out in the trenches. And no one's going to think, oh, World War II. This could be an excuse to go to a, a mysterious uh, lost land of dinosaurs. I think it's a it's a really inventive twist and the the World War II aspect from here on in doesn't play a major role because they're all working together and trying to survive but it's a pretense for of course the British and the Germans do not trust each other and there are there are reasonable men on both sides and there are unreasonable men on both sides and as anyone anyone who's uh, ever been in a, any sort of group argument knows it takes one unreasonable person in either of the groups to ignite that fuse and off goes the TNT boom. <laughs> so yeah, there there is this underlying tension and they are out to screw each other over. But this is only because of tensions by some of the less the less focused people here. I mean, for, for most of them, this is a fascinating discovery. It, it's a, an, an untouched land with new, well, rather old creatures. And, you know, there's so much bigger things going on than their petty war, but... I guess they, they can't see it that way. And the the interesting thing about this 
is that it was made in 1974 and by this point I think the the dinosaurs were on their way out you know the those old effect dinosaurs they weren't so popular as they were in the uh, I don't know, 60s? 60s they were a little more popular. Stop motion dinosaurs were always a thing. And those were years before. There wasn't so many dinosaur movies in the 70s, sadly. And, and I think this is one of my favourite dinosaur movies just because it's all practical effects and they have a compelling story and an interesting unique situation I love the effects though that every dinosaur I mean you can tell that it, it's just uh, very crude techniques but they're effective techniques and I really really enjoyed seeing that the acting of course is great and Overall, I'm going to give the film 8.5 out of 10. I totally recommend it to anyone who who can get the Kino version. However, uh, money being an issue, uh, I believe you can get it in a box set with several other movies in the UK on DVD. So it's not going to be as good picture quality, but you can get it pretty cheap. Just three movies. I cannot remember which the other two movies were but I know that they're among those Doug McClure adventure films of the time so I'm I'm thinking the people that time forgot may be uh, in the set. I know that there there were other ones besides these two of course so uh, at the Earth's core being one of them, and I'm pretty sure At the Earth's core is in the set. And that's another film I should maybe review another day. Uh, really, the I love that film. I, I particularly love Peter Cushing's line towards the end of that film. But uh, that that's that's something to talk about another time. Uh, so I, I'm going to leave you guys now. Hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to uh, share these videos wherever you can. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever you have. Every little thing, it helps. Um, appreciate it, as always. I'm going to let you guys go now. I have movies to watch big night planned. So enjoy guys. Peace out.